Hi, welcome to The Well. If this is your first time here, I'm Lisette Hernandez, and I do this channel to share practical and relatable Bible stories, but I also talk about Christian living. And one of the main goals I had when I started this channel was to share my story of infertility. And I have so much that I want to offer for today. It's probably a long one. You might want to grab a snack or even come back later when you have time to listen. Because trust me, when I tell you this story is four years in the making and God is still writing this story, I'm not exaggerating. If there was one video that I created for just one person, it would be this one. Because back in 2016, when I first found out I had problems conceiving and probably would have problems carrying a child, I was all over YouTube searching for women with conditions like mine. I have PCOS and I also have a bicornuate uterus. The heart that I was making on the cover of this video was really a shout out to all those women out there who have a heart-shaped uterus. Because a bicornuate uterus is basically two horns. Whereas maybe a normal uterus would be about this size, a bicornuate uterus is like two sides. That's why it's bicorn, like two horns. And so it's not common. I've seen many doctors and I can confirm this is not common, but I know there's people out there. And like I mentioned, I have a lot to present. I have different clips. One of the first things I want to talk about is a testimony of how God confirmed to me that I would have children. And that recording was done back in January. It was part of a teaching I did called Walking in God's Promises, which I will also link at the end of the video and have in the description below. And in that video, I talk about believing God and holding on to that promise, walking in it, living according to that word that was spoken to you. I'm not going to do a teaching here. I'm going to tell you the story. After you watch that clip, I'm going to explain why I'm just sharing this now, which is being recorded on April 28th, 2020. In 2016, I took a little more seriously trying to conceive because I had gotten married in 2013 and I wasn't worried about it at first. The first year was kind of actually good that I didn't get pregnant. Um, then 2014, 2015, I started to have more of a question like, okay, now what's going on? 2016, I went to the doctor and they diagnosed me with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And at the same time, I found out I have a bicornuate uterus. And basically one problem was to conceive and the other problem was to carry a baby and also had some complications in the conception as well. So from 2016 all the way through 2017, I went to different doctors. I actually switched fertility doctors at a point. I did lots of treatments. I took lots of medications. Um, although there was one pregnancy, it was considered chemical. If any of you have gone through something like this or know somebody who's gone through something like this, you would know what I'm talking about. You can Google it. But the point is that nothing really worked. And when I got to the end of 2017, you know, mind you, it sounds quick when I just say 2016, 2017, but all this time I'm living in expectation. I really got to the point where I was like, Lord, you had me go through these treatments because I prayed about it and I really felt like the Lord had given me the green light to seek medical help and nothing worked. So when 2018 came, I decided to stop the treatments and to make a drastic move to start making certain changes. Now, if I pause right here and give you some of the insight into what God was speaking into my life, I will tell you that in 2016, I had made a prayer to the Lord and I said, God, I'm not going to be like the woman with the issue of blood flow. I'm not going to go to all these doctors and then finally come to you and ask you for healing and help. I'm coming to you now and I'm coming to you first. And I made my petition known. I said, Lord, I want three kids because I always wanted two girls because I have sisters and I just love the whole sister bond. And I said, and a little boy, because you know what? Why not? Every man needs his little mini him. So I prayed to the Lord in July of 2016. I wrote it in my journal and I asked God for three kids, two girls and a boy. In 2016, I'm visiting a friend and her husband says, you'll probably have three kids, two girls and a boy. And when he said that, it just really like, wow. That's exactly what I asked God for. No one had known. I hadn't even said it to my husband what I had been praying for. And I believed those words. And so I moved forward believing that God was confirming that I would have three children. Well, let me fast forward to the month of June of 2017. 
it had been several months. I'm waiting. These treatments aren't working. And I asked God, Lord, I really need to hear from you. I need to know, am I really going to have three kids or not? And the reason I bring this testimony is because we can say God speaks, but sometimes we want to know, well, how did God speak to you? So it was a really, it was like one of those hard weekends. I was just down. I had done a treatment. It didn't work. I just found out and I was getting so tired. I mean, there's so many medications, there's so many blood tests, there's so many ultrasounds and things that go into a cycle when you're getting fertility treatments. And I said, Lord, I have two questions and I, I desperately need answers. Number one question, Lord God, am I gonna have three kids or not? Is this just insanity? Is this something that I made up? Were those words just words that were passing? Like, is that something you really wanted me to know? And I said, Lord, if I'm gonna have three kids, I need you to confirm these words. I need someone who prays for me, not to tell me your petition is coming, nothing general, but I need them to confirm the number. And my second question is, are they gonna come through my body or not? Because I'm doing all these treatments and you can be a mother in many ways. Was I gonna adopt? Was I gonna do something else, Lord God? What is the answer? That same weekend, I prayed that on a Friday, by Sunday, a woman prayed for me. In one part of the prayer, she said, you're going to be a mother and it's not going to be one or two. Now, let me do the math. Okay, it's not one. It's not two. So my next option will be three. <laughs> and then she said, prepare because a pregnancy is coming. So as I meditated on those words, because mind you, 2017, that was June. So 2017, you know, August, September, October, November, December. And then so before the year had ended, I made a drastic decision. Well, what felt drastic at the moment and my husband and I, we decided, I said, prepare, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to do as Isaiah 54 says. I'm going to enlarge the place of your tent. I'm going to stretch my curtains. I'm going to lengthen my cords. I'm going to strengthen my stakes. So we sold the house that we had and we decided to buy a new one. And in the house we wanted to buy, it was important that I would have a bedroom for each child. And when I would buy this house, I would dedicate each room to each child that I believed the Lord was going to give me. And so that began my process of walking, acting according, and living. And if you know me, please comment below. Have you heard this story? Have you heard me testify this? Because one day, people are going to see the outcome of what the Lord has done. I mean, he's already started it. I'm going to introduce you to my first little miracle. But I want you to be able to say, I am a witness. So let me take you back to 2018. I began the year and I was just waiting. And at this time, I'm still praying. How's it going to happen, Lord? How's it going to happen? What am I going to do? We finally move into our new house. Things are getting taken care of. I'm saving up because let me tell you, kids are expensive. So there was a lot of things that practically had to happen before the child or children would come. So I go back to the doctor and because of all the medicine I took, I had grown what they call polyps. You can look that up also. So I decided because I already have a split uterus, so it's not having a lot of space. And so they cleaned out both sides. And what really, really makes a difference wasn't what the doctors did. What really makes a difference was July 8th, 2018. There was a service in my church. I had a special part. I don't sing. And I sung Waymaker. And I testified. I hope that this is the last time. The Lord has put it in me to testify one more time. I am going to get pregnant. I told the people what my conditions were. And I said what the Lord had put in my heart. And that was in July and August I got pregnant. But you know what? I did lose that pregnancy. But what I really learned from that pregnancy was God hadn't just given me a pregnancy. God had healed me. God had enabled me, not with any medicine, not with any treatments, to have children. And I understood because of that pregnancy and the next pregnancy, who is my son now, that the Lord had healed me and God is a healer. And God not only gave me, again, what I had been praying for, but he healed my body of infertility. So then... 45 days actually after I had lost that pregnancy, which is in September of 2018, by November of 2018, I was pregnant. And again, miraculously, no treatments, no medicine, nothing. And although there were risks, I carried that pregnancy all the way through. And I had my son of July of 2019. And in the King James Version, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. It says in the NIV, for no word from God will ever fail. Kind of takes us back to his promises. And this verse was spoken to Mary when she found out she was pregnant. And it wasn't actually about Mary. It was about Elizabeth. Because the angel said to her, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a child in her own age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. 
And to me, that was so special because it never was that Elizabeth was barren. It said that she who was called barren. It's because the Lord had reserved Elizabeth's womb for a key moment in history because John the Baptist had to be born at a certain time in reference to Jesus. So in this chapter, when God speaks to Mary, he says, for nothing shall be impossible with God. I took this word for me, that who was called barren, and the Lord spoke to me and he told me I am not barren and I walked in that word. So this is little Danny, Daniel Jose, and this is the product of many prayers of believing that what God has spoken over our life would come to be. So I encourage you to keep on believing, keep on trusting, walk in faith, and know that if God spoke it over your life, it will come. Because we have to believe that he who has promised is faithful to come through with his promise. Right, Danny? Amen. I mentioned I recorded that back in January. And if I rewind just the week before that, December 31st, I kind of had this feeling like I was pregnant. And I remember I testified in church on January 1st, 2020, saying that I was asking God for a double portion. And they knew what I was talking about. I was so thankful for the baby boy that God has given me, but now I wanted a double portion. Yes, twins. And if you're like, what? Do you know what you're saying? My oldest sister, when she had a son who was just a few months old, like literally, I think he was like three months or so, she found out she was pregnant. And then she found out it was twins and those are my twin nieces and they're identical twins. So then here I am like, wow, I really hope this is true. I found out I was pregnant on January 6th and in my heart, I was like, wow, maybe this is the twins I've been praying for. So when I found that I was pregnant, I wanted to catch my husband's reaction on camera. And so I'm going to show you the clip of me telling my husband I was pregnant. And again, this is back in January of this year. And so we're going to just kind of take a trip down memory lane and look through. Okay, so I'll let you open it. Okay. Oh. Okay. This is the test say that she was pregnant. Actually, that's a new test. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Look in the yellow bag. Why is this happening? <laughs> What's going on here? I got an ultrasound a few days ago. So, that's you can check the date. Are you kidding me? You mean... <laughs> <laughs> One, nine. Two thousand twenty. I don't know what that means. Right. Okay, so it was from January 9th, two thousand twenty. And so we're gonna believe that this is our baby Rachel, and we're just waiting for her. So thank you so much for watching. We're gonna celebrate the pregnancy, and stay tuned for more of what's gonna be coming at the well. Are you kidding me? I was so happy to be pregnant because when you go through something like this. And feel like you're never gonna get pregnant trust me you'll receive any pregnancy at any time however it was a hard pregnancy like it was in the first few weeks I was very nauseous I was trying to take care of my son having a hard time my dog got really sick and it was just a lot going on I was still working but nevertheless I was gonna move forward happily in the pregnancy but in the back of my head I was like somebody is not gonna survive well it ended up being that on January 18th I had to put my dog down that's when I recorded God is with you in the valley. You could even go back and see how my eyes are so red. I was just so sad, but I wanted to push forward. Okay. That Friday, so only days after putting my dog down, I get an ultrasound and they tell me the heartbeat has declined. This was about the seventh week of my pregnancy. And I just, honestly, I feel like I didn't even react. I, on one hand, said maybe there's some hope. So then I recorded the teaching Welcoming Blessings and in that teaching I talk about two women who lose their children and are resurrected back to life. But on the other hand, I have lost a pregnancy before and I said, you know, I've been through this before. I, I know what this feels like. So I kind of just took the hit. I kind of just, if this pregnancy doesn't last, I've seen God turn this around before. 
I went back to the doctor on Monday, so it was just a few days after that ultrasound because they said that they had to do a follow-up ultrasound to check. So when I went back, I went to my OB. She goes to check and I'm looking at the ultrasound screen and mind you, I've seen many, many ultrasounds in my pregnancy with my son. I had one every week up to almost 25 weeks. And I'm looking at the screen and I see something interesting and the doctor says, I don't see a heartbeat, which I could tell because there was no twinkle. At this point, you should see like a blinking. And she says to me, did they tell you it was twins? Are you serious? I don't even think I spoke. I was just like, what? My twins? My twins. The twins, twins I've been twins praying I've been for? Twins. Mind you, all this is natural. I haven't done treatments, anything. I had my son in July, and here I am pregnant now in January. Was that five months later? Almost six? And it's twins? The twins that I've been believing for? The twins I've been praying for? That would be exactly three children. When I thought it was one, it wasn't like I was okay with losing it. But at the same time, I was like, well, maybe that's not the twins I have been waiting for. But then when you tell me it's twins, it's like, my twins? twins? Like, how does a woman who has fertility struggles for years finally get pregnant on her own with twins? Now what do I have to do? Get pregnant with twins again? And remember I said that my sister has identical twins? Something I learned, um, identical twins don't run in the family. That's what the doctors told me. Uh, fraternal twins do because it's separate eggs. But identical twins are what they could just call a freak of nature. Like, no one knows why an embryo would split into two. And when they went to remove the pregnancy because it just would not come out, I tried to pass it naturally, the doctor told me it was most likely identical twins because, mind you, it was just one sac. Now all this in itself is a great impossibility. A woman with, again, half of a uterus, two babies would have been in half of a uterus. I had been praying for twins, but one in each side. And you know what, it's whatever God wants, honestly. I just would like to have more children. When you're waiting on God, it's not always a straight run. That, that miscarriage really threw me off. I mean, Obviously, it's not my first one, but it was just like, even after I had a child, so I speak to any woman out there who has had a miscarriage, trust me, you can have a full-term healthy baby and still miscarry. It's, it's unexplainable, honestly, why women miscarry. We try to find so many reasons or logic to it, but we just have to trust that in all this, God remembers us. There are so many women in the Bible who struggle with infertility. We talk about Sarah and how she was used for God to bring Isaac and how Isaac then became the father of Jacob and Jacob had sons who became the tribe of Israel. But guess what? Isaac's wife was barren, Rebecca, and Jacob's wife, Rachel, was barren. And many more women. I mean, I can name a few. Samson's mom was barren. Elizabeth, the Bible says who they called barren. That's John the Baptist's mom. Who else was barren? Uh, Samuel's mom was barren. Hannah, all these great men of God and of barren women. Because when God wants to do something great in your life, he wants people to know that it was not by man. My message to anyone struggling with infertility, and I will tell you, listen, it is hard. And I think one of the hardest things is you don't know if it's going to be three months or three years. And I was put on the three-year plan. And I thank God for that because I could have been put on the 10-year plan. I mean, there's so many women who are waiting even longer that I had to wait. But I want to tell you that everyone's story is different. This is my story. My story is that I tried treatments for over two years and nothing worked. That I miscarried, had a son, and then miscarried again. That to this day, as I speak to you, I'm still waiting for God to fulfill the remainder of the word that I believe that he spoke over my life. That my pregnancy happened naturally. That doesn't make it better. It's not because I had greater faith. Some women will use treatments and will get pregnant. And it doesn't make it lesser of a miracle. Because do you know how many factors need to go into play? I had a friend who walked with me in this season. And we walked through our fertility together. Literally, like... 
we would do treatments and we would compare our numbers and we would talk about what was happening. I even think we had gotten um, IUIs on the same day sometimes. But you know what I learned in this whole process? That God was going to do things with each of us in his own way. She actually ended up doing IVF and today she has six month old twins. I was thinking about IVF, but I didn't feel like I had the green light for it. I just felt like it just didn't seem like God was telling me to do it in that given moment. And right when I got a consultation to see what it would take, that's when um, they cleaned out everything with the polyps that I mentioned. And then I got pregnant and I never got my cycle after that. And again, it's not greater faith. It's just that that's my story. And that was her story. And she you can actually find her on Instagram. It's Faith, Love, Infertility. I'll leave it below. And I'm telling you that there's going to be so many things you go through. People are going to say things that are going to be so annoying. Like, number one most annoying thing, you'll get pregnant when you stop trying. Like, but something else that people would say, like, I'm not getting pregnant because I'm stressed. Like, okay, so how about this? I got pregnant 45 days after a miscarriage. It wasn't like I was living the happiest moment of my life. Or you'll get pregnant when you give up. Like, all these things. How about, how about this? I have an idea. You'll get pregnant in the time that God has determined for you to get pregnant. I mean, that's just that's just like a wild guess. Again, everyone's story is different. And I'm so thankful for my son. When I lost that last pregnancy, I was able to overcome it a little better because I have a son and I had received a great blessing. I know what it is to be pregnant and carry a pregnancy. And I'm so, so thankful for that. And again, my message to any woman out there struggling with infertility is hold on. It's going to be a rocky road. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster. People won't understand, but pray that God sent someone like the friend I had by my side who we walked through that season together and we both received our children. As I sit here today, how do I feel about what God's going to do in my life? I can tell you some days I am like excited. When are these babies coming? Maybe it's twins. Some days I'm like, well, I have one child. I should just be happy for that. Some days I talk about my other kids. Some days I don't think about it at all. I am still hopeful. I am still holding on. And I would say I'm expecting. Um, when you say you're expecting, it's like saying you're pregnant. So maybe we can use the word expectant. Even though it kind of means the same thing, but people don't use expectant as much for pregnancy. Because expectant is excited that something's going to happen. I am expectant about what God can and will do in my life. And remember, for God, nothing is impossible. Nothing. God can move in the midst of any circumstances. He is the giver of life. I hope that in this day, these words encourage you. They really bless you where you are. And if you know someone going through something like this, just share it with them. Maybe they'll be able to see that, you know what, there are successful stories. There's people who've gotten pregnant through IUIs, IVF, or just natural after trying all the treatments. Everyone's story is different. And just know that God is writing your story. And it will be beautiful. And your children will be amazing. I invite you to subscribe because who knows, one day you might get a notification saying, big announcement and I'll be pregnant. On a side note, not only am I waiting for children, I'm waiting for two girls. So I'm wearing pink in honor of my daughters that I am praying for that God will give me two girls. God bless you. I just wanted to show you Danny. This is um, him at 10 months. The other clip was when he was almost um, six months, about five months old. And he's growing really good and we're just so thankful for everything God has done for us and he's just faithful. It's not because we are good, but it's because he is good. And I encourage you, like I did back then, to keep on believing in the one who has given the promise. Adios. Sing, barren woman. You who never bore a child, burst into song. Shout for joy. You who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. 
And then verse 4 says, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. So what advice would you give to a couple going through infertility, um, suffering from pregnancy loss, infant loss, or just maybe somebody who is waiting for God to fulfill a promise in their life? Well, somebody is waiting for God to fulfill the promise in her life. You just have to believe. You just have to believe and wait in God perfect time. God is always on time. His time is not our time. We just have to believe in God. And like we already established, nothing is impossible for him. God bless you, and I hope you keep coming back to the well. Thank you.